Thank you, Ms. Prade. Uh, Pema, would you would you like to pray? If you're comfortable, if not, I could ask someone else. Okay, not sure if uh, Pema is able to lead us. Uh, how about uh, Nicholson? I think it's easier. Uh, Nicholson is from our church, so we call him Nikki. Easy to call you Nikki. Uh, Nikki, would you like to pray? Sure, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, very well. Okay. Uh, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We just thank you for giving us this opportunity and this chance to come before you and uh, learn together, Lord. We just pray that as we uh, study your word and learn about prayer and intercession, Lord, corporate intercession, we just pray that this would edify us mm -hmm. and uh, we would go out and practice this also, Lord, and we would see the fruit of it. We pray for your uh, special anointing upon uh, uh, Pastor Nancy as she teaches us also, Lord. May your Holy Spirit speak through her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, Miki. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a blessing. Yeah, God bless. Okay, let's uh, get into uh, today's class. I know uh, we had some questions about praying in the spirit in the last class. So again, you know, if you are applying what we have been talking about, what we've been studying so far, please feel free. You can ask questions from the previous chapters also. Okay, so uh, we can do that towards the end of today's class. But I'll go straight into the next topic here in our notes, which is about prophetic prayer. Now, for some of us, this concept of uh, prophetic, the prophetic might be very new. Uh, what I can encourage you to do is, you know, we have uh, an APC publication called as Understanding the Prophetic. So if you would like to get a hold of that publication, again, it's uh, in our uh, resources section. So you can just uh, use the URL apcw.org slash books. Go there. You have PDF versions of books in many languages. You pick out, if you want English, pick out the English books. And over there, uh, choose the PDF of Understanding the Prophetic. Then it'll give you a lot of insights about uh, how we hear from God because we serve a God who speaks, a God who communicates. And throughout the word of God, we find that God was speaking, isn't it? He was speaking to people. So how did they pick up the message? That is the prophetic. Okay, We can get to understand the prophetic. Now, today, what we are going to discuss more specifically is Hearing from God and that moving us to pray. So prophetic prayer, okay, prophetic prayer. So we are praying in line with what God is saying. That's what we are going to discuss about. So we can engage in what is known as, as part of prayer, we've seen there are many different kinds of prayers, one of which is intercession. Intercession is what we do on behalf of others. So we can pray prophetically for ourselves or we can also pray for others. And when we are praying for others, we would call it prophetic intercession. And we would pray that in line with what God has put uh, upon our hearts. Now, when we uh, speak to God, when we spend time with God, through the Holy Spirit, we've talked about this, even when we touched on praying in the Spirit, we said the Holy Spirit, one of the things that he does is he brings revelation. He knows the mind of God. Okay? The Spirit of God knows the mind of God. So he's able to reveal uh, what is going on in God's mind to us. So he's a spirit of revelation. We say that revelation or he shares uh, the mind of God with us. So he brings revelation. So we can pray, we can ask God for revelation about ourselves. Or remember in the pattern of prayer and yesterday when we touched upon how you can have a set time to pray. And in that time, you can pray about many different things. We can actually ask God 
about each of those subjects you can say okay god uh, i want you to reveal to me about my ministry and then god would reveal it to you so what is this revealing revelation hearing from god god speaking to us prophetic okay, so that rema word of god or the now word of god is being released to us and on the basis of that we begin to pray okay so we could also ask god and say god you know uh, reveal to me about my city what is it that i must pray for maybe god might point you to uh, praying more specifically for the leaders or the education system or something so you heard from god that okay i need to focus on this one area and then you go ahead and you begin to pray about that so we have a god who can give us revelation about different things that concern us it could be our families it could be our future it could be our church congregation right so he can guide us he can lead us so we must ask him there are a couple of scriptures which are listed here about our god revealing himself to us his purposes to us so it'll be good for us to read it so if someone can take up isaiah 45 and 11 you can read it it's in the notes as well one person can read that one person can read isaiah 42 and verse 9 okay and uh, one okay yeah sure 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 isaiah 45 verse 11 thus okay. is the lord the holy one of israel and his maker ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands you command me mm, wow isn't that amazing thank you rosalyn so god is saying ask me okay uh, and i am able to reveal to you he basically over here he says about my people but we know that god is a god who can speak to us about so many different things and god says ask me okay uh, the next scripture please someone can you read it isaiah 42 in verse 9 isaiah 42 verses 9 see the former things have taken place and a new things i declare before the spring into big being i announce them to you wow thank you thank you sidkenu so do you see that god says even before it takes place i can tell you okay i reveal it to you so is it possible for a believer to know things ahead of those things actually happening very much okay that's where the whole prophetic prayer comes in so we can know that god is saying i will reveal one more verse very beautiful one and uh, this is uh, isaiah 46 and verse 10 again can somebody please take this up and read it for us please isaiah 46 verses 10 i make known the end from the beginning from ancient times what is still to come i say my purpose will stand and i will do all that i please mm, very good so you notice here uh, god is actually saying that he can declare the end from the beginning now how many of you uh, when you start reading a book you know you sometimes the books are so uh, time consuming okay and you want to know the end so but god is saying look i can tell you the end from the beginning in a book it's easy you just read the last few pages you know what's going to happen but in life how to know what's coming up next god is saying i know the end from the beginning before the end takes place because we serve a god who is omniscient he knows all things so on the basis of that we can depend on his revelation right uh, on various matters so the point that we are trying to drive home here is god can give us revelation and what did we say about prayer he said god reveals his purposes and we pray it right we pray it into uh, existence we exercise our authority through prayer we establish things through prayer so on the basis of what on the basis of god's purposes now we have understood in a prayer believing prayer we said we should first hear from god or first understand the will of god and that we will understand from his word 
in addition to that, the work of the Holy Spirit, where revelation is given to us, on the basis of that, we can pray. So God reveals, we pray. Right? And things happen. Uh, so we can depend on God. We can ask God. We can trust God. So today, you know, we will see when we hear from God uh, and we start praying, on the, on, uh, uh, praying those, um, you know, th those revelations through, how, how can it benefit us? So there are a couple of things that can happen when God reveals uh, you know, it can it can delay or avert God's judgment. So there are a couple of things in our notes here that happen when we pray through what God is revealing. So one uh, one point here in our notes is that prophetic prayers can delay or avert God's judgment. Then we will also talk about prophetic prayers that will foil Satan's attacks, and then we will touch on prophetic prayers which reveal one's destiny they uh, you know uh, reveals one's destiny and prophetic prayers which can also um, you know you can use them as declarations as proclamations to uh, execute the purposes of god on the earth you know when we speak the word of god when we decree the word of god uh, you know that that word begins to work it goes into action and things are accomplished so we'll look at these main points about what for prophetic prayer can do now we have understood that god can reveal uh, and uh, we can pray on the basis of that so the first point here prophetic prayer uh, that delays or averts god's judgment so there's a wonderful um, uh, you know example in the bible you have the prophet amos who was given a vision okay and in that vision this is in amos chapter 7 you find that first he sees uh, uh, you know the northern kingdoms of israel or, or, or he's part of the northern kingdoms of israel who are experiencing a wonderful time they are they are doing well they are prosperous politically economically uh, and uh, they they are basically enjoying themselves but their hearts were far away from God and the way things were moving, that was not good. So uh, God knew what was to happen later. Now, these people, they are having a great time. They don't know right? that uh, God is uh, upset about their heart attitude. And uh, uh, you you find that these people were also engaging in pleasure and uh, uh, you know a lot of things which were not pleasing God idolatry injustice and things like that. So obviously you know when you when you sow things like that in the land, what can you reap? You can only reap the results, the consequences of the wrongdoing. So God gave a vision to his prophet Amos and revealed to him that judgment is going to come upon the people. So. In the first incident, you know, Amos sees uh, locusts coming and destroying, uh, you know, the, the the land, the green, the grass of the land. And basically he understands, he understands that this is judgment and judgment is going to come. But the moment he sees that, he prays to God and he says like, God, let it not happen. Let it not happen. Okay. And God relents. God says, okay, fine, you know, like, I will not make it happen. It shall not be, said the Lord. And uh, uh, his prayer was answered. Now, again, he sees another image. Okay, that is the image of fire, fire coming and destroying. And again, when Amos sees this vision, he says, God, you know, let it not be. And then God relents. So what's happening? See, basically, God is speaking to the prophet and he's saying that, judgment is uh, impending judgment right on the people of god uh, and uh, what is the expectation that god has from a man of god intercession and amos does that and he says no god you know let it not be god is revealing he's saying look it's moving in that direction and uh, somebody has to stand in the gap for this judgment to not take place and god actually relents and it does not happen so uh, we, we notice here that when God reveals, you know, 
maybe some consequence of sin or uh, uh, a judgment. The judgment is a huge word here, but when God reveals things to us, we can intercede. We can intercede for ourselves. We can intercede for the people and say, "How about our land?" Right? We we know that uh, righteousness must be established in our land, and it's not yet uh, in that state. So when God reveals certain things to us, we can pray and we can say, "God, you know, let it not be." Uh, if there is any any a consequence of this sin and injustice, Lord, we ask that you uh, remove it off. And you can actually see these judgments stop. Uh, there's also another incident in the life of uh, Ahab. Okay, Ahab, uh, uh, when he repented, you know, God delayed the judgments. Like he was judged, but uh, it came as uh, King Ahab. It came in like stages. Okay, because he pleaded with God for that to happen. So it uh, it actually happened for him. So we could delay or we can avert God's judgment through prophetic prayer. And again, see, it, it all depends on what God is revealing to us. But here we are focusing in on three major points as I've already shared with us. So if God reveals things to us, we can intercede. Okay. Yeah, uh, and I think particularly this is uh, uh, helpful when we are praying for our nation, when we are praying for our people, right? Uh, so we could we could ask God, God, you know, what are the areas? Where would you want me to focus? And then God can begin to reveal, and we can pray for the people. Now, uh, in the Old Testament, there are examples, other examples also of leaders who prayed. And God uh, did not bring judgment upon the people. So Moses is a good example. And we all know, you know, how uh, the people that Moses led uh, complained all the time. And they did not have an attitude of faith towards God. And every now and then they used to get in trouble with God. And God's judgment, right? Because God is a holy God. And uh, when the people, uh, uh, you know, went about sinning, Moses had to plead with God. He had to stand in the gap. And as a leader, he had to say, God, no, please, like, spare them. What will the other nations say? You brought them out with a mighty hand. You brought them out from Egypt. And now if you only destroy them in the wilderness, what will the other nations say? So there are many times when Moses goes before God, he intercedes, and the judgment actually is taken away from the people. So in that manner, you know, uh, there's also a role that uh, leadership can play uh, as God reveals different things uh, and put, puts it on our hearts. We can actually pray for the people now. It is applicable for any form of leadership. Maybe you're praying for uh, your own children in the family or some, somebody that you have influence over in the household. But you can see you know, judgment averted. You can see judgment delayed uh, over the lives of the people. When God reveals something, one more thing to uh, realize is uh, it's not to go and tell everyone. So in the understanding the prophetic uh, book, we talk about that. So when we get dreams, right, a lot of intercessors, they, they get confused. They're like, okay, God showed me this, this, this. What should I do about it? Should I go and tell everyone? Should I put it in uh, uh, social media? You know, the first thing that God is really expecting us to do when he reveals something is for us to pray, right? And sometimes that might be the only thing he wants us to do. I'm telling you, you pray. That's all, right? So we pray about those matters. And uh, usually uh, what happens, you know, the prayer is heard and things change, right? And what, what do the others say? They'll be like, I told you, it's not going to happen. But then, you know, God is spoken to the hearts of so many people and for all you know there have been hundreds and thousands of people that God has spoken to about a certain matter and then you know they all prayed for it and it didn't happen right so God works in this way he chooses to reveal things uh, much ahead of time and then we as his people we are faithful to intercede to those uh, if, if at all he's communicating to us about judgment about you know certain things happening as a consequence to the wrongdoing, those things can be stopped or they can also be delayed. Okay, now moving on to the next thing here, which is prophetic intercession, which 
uh, foils Satan's attacks. Now, uh, while we're talking about this, I just want to make one point here. As believers, right, uh, we have to always function from a place of faith, function from a place of authority. Okay, uh, as long as we are in the world, what happens? There is the infection of sin in the world. There is the work of Satan uh, against everybody, especially against the believer. There is the work of Satan. So when we talk about Satan's attacks, you know, as believers, our response should not be like, oh my goodness, you know, what will I do? How uh, Satan is waiting to attack me. Let's not be uh, Satan and demon conscious. Let's be more God conscious. You know, we have... Uh, great authority, the keys of the kingdom. I've given you the keys of the kingdom, uh, Jesus said, right? So you can bind and lose, you can exercise your spiritual authority. Having said that, you know, when we do uh, see that Satan is scheming and plotting against God's people, which he does all the time against everybody, okay, uh, God is able to reveal it well ahead of time. Things. And when he does reveal that, hey, look, you are moving in the wrong direction or, you know, uh, there is some issue along the way. Be careful. God can speak to our hearts. And when we know a hey, Satan is planning something uh, against uh, my family in this area or my community or my job or, you know, anything, anything, something concerning me, my money, I might end up having a huge loss. Uh, what, what do you do? Basically, when God reveals that to you, you start to pray okay so what are you doing you're foiling satan's attacks so he's planning he's building up something against us but what does this what of god say you know we know uh, isaiah 54 17 it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper every tongue that rises against you you shall condemn you know? and uh, that god will lead me in triumphant victory in christ jesus so we hold on to these scriptures and when god is revealing to us that satan is up to something we have to diffuse his plans, his attacks. How do we do that? Through prayer. So you begin to pray and you say, no, we're not letting this happen. God has already revealed it. And <laughs> uh, Satan, no, we destroy your plans in Jesus' name. So you counter, basically you counter it through prayer. Okay. And even before it takes place, it's, it's gone. It's destroyed. And let's say for whatever reason, you have started off and uh, you know, you're, you're seeing things unfold which you don't like, but God can still protect us. He can get us out of that situation. But God reveals well ahead of time that this is dangerous. You're heading in a uh, wrong direction because there are schemes and strategies of the enemy against you. Now we see a good example. Jesus tells uh, Peter, Simon Peter, in uh, Luke 22, verses 31 and 32, he says, uh, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. So when Jesus was aware that Peter is going to walk through a test, that Peter is going to be um, attacked, Right, uh, and we know what happened. Jesus died, and it was a tumultuous time for the disciples because they thought, "Hey, the King has come to establish the kingdom." But before their eyes, he's being beaten, bruised, rejected, you know, ill-treated, and he's dead. Okay, so what happens to the confidence of the disciples? They they have hit rock bottom, and at that time, you know, Peter denies Christ. So, in whatever he's going through, Jesus already knew. It's going to be a tough time. But you know what, Peter? The best thing I can do for you to protect you is to pray for you. So Jesus said, uh, I have prayed for you, Peter. So in advance, Jesus had actually prayed uh, for Peter. And how does this prayer actually help uh, uh, Peter? So you see, prayer protects. Okay, Prayer forms a, uh, it forms like a fortress a refuge, a covering, a shelter, uh, and, and it protects the believer. And Jesus knew that. Now talking about uh, a leader praying for, you know, the disciple, uh, there's also the example of Moses. This is in, uh, you know, Hosea 12, 13, where God says, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was preserved. Okay, so preserved. By a prophet, he was 
preserved. That term uh, over there, preserved, is actually uh, the term shamar. Shamar uh, in Hebrew, which means to hedge. Whatever I said, fortress, refuge, what are these things? It's like a hedge. If you have a garden and you have a fence around it, basically a fence, okay, it protects. So by a prophet, uh, the people of God were preserved. Now, how, how did the prophet preserve the people of God? He was a praying person. Okay, so he every time he used to go and he used to pray. And it is through the prayers that you can actually form a hedge. Now, this is so helpful for those of us who may be in some role of influence or authority. I'm sure for parents, it makes all the difference that you can pray for your children. Okay, You can't go wherever they go. Uh, I, I know uh, parents worry, right? Oh, children have to go to school. Children have to, what will happen? How will they manage? Why can't you pray for them? Shamar, okay? Preserve, hedge. You can put a hedge of prayer around them. And when they are protected, even if Satan were to have some uh, ideas to, to bring them down, some danger along the way, something evil that the enemy wants to do, what have you done? You have protected through your prayers. And that's what Jesus did for Peter, Moses did for his people. And, you know, we are called to do that for um, uh, everyone that God puts on our heart. We can actually pray. And this word shamar is also, uh, it means cover. So when you see that, uh, you know, God um, covered. Uh, okay. Mm, hang on. Yeah. So when God asked Adam to protect the garden or keep the garden. The word Shamar is used when uh, Cain complains and he says, you know, am I my brother's keeper, keeper or protector? That word also is Shamar. So Shamar is basically to protect and preserve. So we can pray. I told you that parents can pray for the children. Um, uh, pastors can pray for their congregations. Leaders, any capacity of leadership, we can pray for God's people and um, you know, God can put things on our hearts and he can warn us and say, look, it's headed in this direction. I want you to pray. So it's a prophetic prayer which you raise up. And as you're praying that prophetic prayer, what happens? It's like one invisible shield. You, know, you have all these sci-fi movies. There's shield. You can't see it, but there is a shield. And that is what a prophetic prayer can do. Uh, and we can, you know, uh, go against uh, the sin that Satan can bring against God's people, deception that he may want to bring against God's people, you know, any kind of worldliness, temptation, uh, uh, any evil like witchcraft. There are so many evils we see, right, that, that Satan tries to bring against God's people, whatever it is, you know, as watchmen or keepers, shamar, preserve, we can protect through the prayers that we pray. Um, and then, the third uh, point here, what prophetic prayers can do. Prophetic prayers can also uh, release one's destiny. Now, if uh, you recall, I think it was uh, Zech Zechariah. He prayed over his son, John. Uh, and uh, when John uh, was born, he prophesied, you child. And he says so many things over uh, John the Baptist. Okay, uh, And that is... The prophetic word released by a father over his child. Now, what is happening through that prophetic prayer? The destiny of that child is being released. So, prophetic intercession. Sometimes you can, God is revealing it. God is revealing, okay, I'm going to do this in the life of so and so. Uh, maybe it's a it's a young person in your church that you're working with and God is revealing to you, I have a great purpose for this individual. Uh, I have a great purpose in, in the field of business for this individual. So what am I supposed to do? God is revealing all these things about that person to me. The first thing you do when you're receiving revelation is pray about it. There's no need to go and tell anyone. There's no need to even go and tell that person unless God says go and tell that person. Okay, so usually God reveals for, for us to engage in prayer. So as you begin to pray for that person in line with what has been told to you, uh, the God is working in that person's life, right? And, and uh, in the spiritual realm, right, your prayers are, are making the way in a sense. 
and their destiny is being shaped they are moving they are being moved in the right direction so prophetic intercession can also uh, release one into their destiny now this is again very very helpful you know parents you might find it most useful because as the lord reveals to you so many things about your children you can pray through and say god thank you you have called my son my daughter for this and i know you know you are you are um, giving them the wisdom you are anointing them you are equipping them you are gifting them right so you are leading them there is favor upon their life so you speak over you speak over you declare over that child and uh, the the destiny of that child is actually being shaped even as you are praying over that individual and similarly you know as a pastor or a leader god might put the destinies of people on our hearts so even the destiny of our congregation and then you begin to pray you say god this is what you're showing me this is what you are going to do lord so i'm speaking that forth i'm declaring that in the name of jesus so through prophetic intercession and remember I, when i told you about uh, dr yongi cho i told you how his prayers were prophetic intercessions because he in fact he knew the exact number of people that he should pray for the holy spirit would reveal to him now how did he receive that revelation so we've been saying all along our fellowship with god our fellowship in the word our fellowship with the holy spirit you know that releases this revelation to us and we are able to receive it okay, in a in a in a very uh, clear way uh, and we know right it's hard to explain when when you ask a person who has uh, heard from god prayed and now finally they are sure that hey this is what god is saying how do you know if you ask a person it's kind of difficult sometimes to explain but you know that god has confirmed it uh, affirmed it reaffirmed it and you're holding on to that prophetic word and then you're beginning to pray it for right and then we pray the prophetic word so many beautiful things happen we've seen how judgment can be averted we've seen how excuse me ma'am you are on a mute yeah thank you sitkin yeah sorry about that so no i was saying that uh, we have seen so far how uh, judgment can be averted through prophetic intercession then attacks can be destroyed and we've also seen how destiny can be released now uh, the prophetic word there's one more application in our notes here which is proclamation or decree uh, jeremiah the prophet right god uh, mm, uh spoke to him and uh, like he kind of revealed the power of the words in his mouth so i think it's good if we read it it's jeremiah 1 verses 9 and 10 uh, somebody will have to turn to it in your bible and read it then ma'am can i ah yes yes rosalind please go ahead then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said to me Behold I have put my words in your mouth see I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant mm, thank you thank you rosin so you see there uh, uh how god wanted jeremiah to do the work god did give him many tools in his hands and we're talking about a nation so and god is saying you know tear down build up you know uproot how do you do such tasks without having equipment right to go dig deep in the ground or you have need a bulldozer to damage a wall none of that but god is saying look you know what i have given you to do all that so much work my word in your mouth use the word when you use the word we don't understand the dynamics of what really happens how this kind of work can be done but the word works the word is powerful so god said put my word in your mouth you go and speak that word to pull down to tear down to build up all those tasks will be done so we are encouraged prophetic intercession is about what it's about the word of god it's about god speaking to us and revealing things to us so when we 
gain that knowledge and we keep that word and we begin to speak the word right what are we doing we are proclaiming we are declaring that prophetic word that you know god is going to do this in my life god is going to do this in my family you know god has promised that he is going to raise up a strong church strong in the spirit strong in the word uh, a, a, a church which will be salt and light uh, a church which will uh, speak the truth of god's word so i mean what are you doing you basically whatever god has put on your heart god has revealed about the things that concern you you're speaking it like jeremiah and when you're speaking it you might think what is the big thing i just said what god said but that's what god told jeremiah my word in your mouth i'm putting my word in your mouth okay and that word when you speak it you will destroy build up mighty things will take place because of the power the inherent power of that word so by faith when i say god you said this i'm also saying it it is very powerful declaration decreeing it's very powerful so when we engage in intercession and we are talking about prophetic intercession god has revealed many things to us he has confirmed many things in our hearts speak it speak it over our lives speak it over the church speak it over the city speak it over the nation right speak it over the body of christ you proclaim it proclaim it declare it and even as we do that there is a work which is being done in the spiritual realm which we may not be able to see but god is working god is at work so that's a, a, a little bit about prophetic okay prophetic intercession so at this point i think i will uh, pause so that we can discuss any thoughts any questions along these lines or if you want to bring up something from the previous chapters that's also fine we can discuss so i'll just leave this time open okay i see some comments here that's nice is god okay so vidya is asking words of knowledge and prophetic what is the difference between words of knowledge and prophetic uh okay divya so when we look at the gifts of the spirit uh, that are listed uh, i think it's listed in first corinthians chapter 12 uh, we see there nine gifts of the spirit so in the gifts of the spirit um like among the nine gifts just for the sake of our understanding we usually classify them uh, under certain categories like um, you know uh vocal gifts vocal gifts would be like uh, uh prophecy uh okay not that category anyway so it is classified in different ways now gifts of revelation if you go by that classification the word of knowledge and prophecy both come under uh the revelation gifts okay so what god is revealing prophecy uh, uh actually yeah uh, prophecy is generally categorize under vocal gifts so don't worry about that so word of knowledge word of wisdom and uh, i think discerning of spirits so this is put under the revelation gifts so word of knowledge is a revelation gift okay so you kind of come to know uh, uh, you you receive a piece of information about something which you never knew earlier okay uh for example i'm just telling you there so there was this lady who came to our place to um help us with something so she stayed over for a couple of days and she was helping us uh i was praying like i was just praying for my home and then this lady was going to come right so i was just praying uh, about that as well but when i was praying for that lady um i felt like she is into stitching clothes Uh, and it, the thought just came to me and I, then i didn't do anything about it it came and it went but i had that sense that she's into stitching clothes i never asked her she came 
and she was helping us for a couple of days and then in a few days i noticed she pulled out her things and she was kind of stitching her uh, clothes and i asked i just stopped i was shocked i said oh, wait a minute so you you stitch she's like yeah i'm actually a tailor and uh, because uh, you know i wasn't doing too well in that now i'm uh, doing some of these other jobs also to make money so like personally for me that was like wow that is amazing that that's a word of knowledge like you have no way of knowing it except that god told you that so word of knowledge right knowledge you have uh, information about something so that's word of knowledge now that's a revelation gift but also it's a prophetic gift so you could say that word of knowledge is under the umbrella of the prophetic so under the prophetic you will have prophecy word of knowledge word of uh, wisdom uh, discerning of spirits so all those gifts come under the prophetic umbrella so that's how you would look at it does it make sense divya yes yes uh, mm-hmm. so um, uh, so words of knowledge also can uh, be related to you know uh, what are root causes of you know certain issues or you know knowing those right like things in the past as well words of knowledge yeah 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 definitely definitely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay okay thank you thank you ma'am yes yeah good and you know the way this is the prophetic right because then you have the understanding you know exactly what to pray for or what to counsel that person for okay yeah yeah right right sure so uh, i'll just share with you one more uh, such incident that happened and it's very strange um so on one of our mission trips we were praying for a particular lady she came uh, and it was me and one of the students actually and that a uh, girl was very new with the prophetic so we generally pray to two people together we pray uh, and then we kind of see like what is god telling me what is god telling you and usually it will flow so we pray uh, in twos so we both were praying for her and we got this uh, impression of wasted time wasted time okay so then we didn't know what to do and we called the pastor this was in some village kind of a setting where we went so we called the pastor and then we uh, you know told that person uh, told her that we are getting this so then the pastor said hey it's a new believer and uh, uh, you know she uh, she's coming from a difficult kind of a lifestyle uh, and also she was not married but she was staying with somebody okay but now she's a believer but she's kind of like not willing to let go of that so the pastors were actually having that issue uh, and then uh, when we revealed we understood like we understood what god was trying to say because uh, she was actually not married and she was not willing to 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 repent and uh, you know make a change in that area so uh, then when the word came up we were able to uh, obviously we did not address it right away because it was very sensitive matter uh, but we told that uh, pastor the, so the pastor lady she kind of took her aside and then she ministered to her and shared with her how you know this is what god is uh, pointing out to and you have to make a correction in this area and also then you know they could do their process of counseling her and uh, taking charge but um, i was amazed like oh man you know this is an issue in this individual's life but through that word of knowledge prophetically it came up uh, and god was showing that person to address that issue okay so th- so many incidents like that so prophetically god can say he can reveal a lot of things to us and uh, even when we are praying like i i remember once that this happened in uh, north church and i was praying for this one person and i can i can smell alcohol okay and i have no clue and this person doesn't come off into church and all he's just on and off kind of a individual so i don't i don't know much about that person i'm praying for him and then i can suddenly smell and obviously like he's alert clean fresh is smelling different in the natural but as i'm praying i can smell it so i was like okay god you know something is happening here so i have to take authority and i kind of took authority and i rebuked that spirit obviously i didn't tell him and uh, shout at him scare him or anything i just quietly did what i needed to do 
uh, and you know I, I rebuked that spirit and all. Uh, but it's only later that he came back to me one day and he sa- said, Pastor Dadi, you pray for me. Uh, you know, I was really struggling. I was stuck in that cycle of uh, wanting to give up drinking, but I was still drinking. But the day you prayed, uh, a real change has come into my life. Okay. But we can't know that unless God reveals, isn't it? So things like that. So you, you depend on the spirit and the, and the gifts of the spirit and uh, God will reveal. Or the reading, you pray in line with that. You minister to the people. Okay. Uh, Sitkeno is sharing. Can you share some testimony or illustration of the word of wisdom? Okay, word of wisdom. Mm. Word of wisdom. See, word of knowledge is information. You receive some information uh, that you could not have known. Word of wisdom is solution. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, word of wisdom. Yeah, so I, I recall that this was in one of my my uh, jobs. Uh, they had given a task, and I, I'm I was not like I mean I was just introduced to things like Excel and all that. So uh, they wanted us to work on uh, data, and we had a way of doing it, and it would take a certain amount of time. Now suddenly they said. Um, you know, you have to uh, finish this work over the weekend and Monday you have to give the report. And that was like a big shock for me and my team. Because honestly, like I or I can work on <laughs> in a certain way, but not like to that extent. And it's huge, huge set of data. So then what happened? I remember so clearly what of wisdom is uh, you knowing a solution which you are not trained to know. Okay. So... Uh, it, it just comes to you. So that night, you will, it, it's amazing. I had a dream and it was as if I'm looking at the Excel sheet and looking at cut, copy, paste, do this, do this, do this like this. Ah, okay, you get your data, your final report. The next day, I did that and the work which is supposed to take me many days to finish, I use that technique and it was done in no time. And there's no way of me doing it, honestly, because, you know, I'm telling you, I wasn't great, neither am I great right now with Excel, I just do some basic stuff. But uh, that's an uh, example of uh, word of wisdom, uh, Zelitoli, which I applied to myself. Now, this, somebody can come to you and they can ask you also for a solution. Uh, for example, mm, you know, somebody comes and tells you a dream, I saw this dream, uh, what is the interpretation? That interpretation is actually, you can rely on the gift of the word of wisdom. Because you don't know what it means. But by the Holy Spirit, you can tell the meaning of a dream. Okay, So that is the application. Like when you're ministering to people, word of, through word of wisdom, you can interpret dreams, visions, uh, and all that. that. Does it help, Senatoli? Yes, ma'am. It's clear. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, class, please hold on. I think uh, people have uh, questions and discussions here. So, some of you, if you have to log off from the class, you, you're free to. But others, if you're staying on, I think we may continue for a few more minutes. Okay. So, uh, Sitkenu says, yesterday night, my grandmother woke up at 2 a.m. in the night and she started weeping and praying. I said, today morning, what happened? She told me that the Lord woke me up and I was praying for someone I don't know. Um, can God wake up anyone to pray for someone you don't? Yes, yes, it can. That can happen. Because, yeah, God just needs an intercessor, right? Uh, and it, he, he uh, finds somebody obedient. He can share. He can reveal. We read those verses when we started off. He can reveal to that person. And that person can pray. So, yes, it's very much possible. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Divya. Thank you. I'm glad it uh, helps you. Um, and yeah, uh, Nikki, you have a question? I saw your hand raised. Yeah, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I, very well. I just, with your permission, I just wanted to share my experience yeah. on work sure. with knowledge. Yeah, please go so, ahead. I, actually, I just recently started moving in that gift because of... Uh, I mean, I honestly, we taken over the ministry here, so we are just uh, started. And every so, how it happened was, 
that we were casting out a demon and then uh, then uh, suddenly i had this thing in my head and i spoke it out um and it turned out it was right and uh, what what why i wanted to say that actually is i felt like there are many people who sometimes doubt what is happening but sometimes we just need to take that doubt out and just speak out whatever it is so the, once we were uh, baptizing someone and i got the picture of a red color leaf which made no sense in my head and then at, after that uh, i got an eye in that leaf and then i just decided to speak it out even though it made no sense but immediately god put a word in my mouth like it, i didn't think of it at all so that person's wife who was getting baptized said do you have idols at home take it out and it's happened like twice or thrice with me so i just felt like encouraging everyone who's thinking that you know maybe it's not you it's just your mind or what not sometimes you just need to speak out and god will fill your mouth with whatever that is and that's the experience with me and uh, i think uh, pastor nancy you can affirm or correct me if i'm wrong or not but that's i just felt like encouraging you to do that yeah of course nikki thank you so much for sharing and it is encouraging um the holy spirit is in every believer and the holy spirit releases the gifts of the spirit in every believer so all of us you know as uh, nikki was sharing uh, i shared my experiences again you know i i do believe that everyone has your own experiences there must be so many times that god reveals things to you in your life uh, um you know your life journey so uh, meditate on those those uh, incidents so i think of all these all these revelations that you know god has uh, helped me with and how each time i've seen oh god it definitely cannot be me it was you working in my life so you can take a step of faith you know the next time you have an impression as uh, nikilo sharing just boldly take a step of faith okay and uh, you know begin to allow the spirit to to minister through you and uh, uh, today mostly we are focused on uh, god revealing things for the sake of intercession so when that happens when god reveals puts things on your heart about yourself or someone else make that effort to pray for them okay in line with what is being revealed and also declarations speak it forth speak it forth and say god thank you that you know this is what you're going to do this is what you have done this is what you have accomplished so you're engaging so you're co-laboring with god god is revealing you are speaking you are praying right and things are being done so uh, just take a step uh, forward everyone and uh, let uh, the revelation that god is giving you move you forward right to uh, see great things accomplished for the glory of god so yeah and please do think about these things and if you still want to talk a little more we can always do that in the next class so we will close off today we will close off with a word of prayer uh, and uh, let me just ask someone to pray please so mm, okay uh, zelitoli can you please pray and close yes ma'am yeah father god i come before your presence in the name of jesus we want to thank you so much for this wonderful session that we had i uh, thank you lord for the life of our pastor Nancy for, for teaching us uh the thing which you have imparted uh, which you have placed in in her heart to teach us lord bless her and continue to use her as a vessel of honor for your kingdom lord i thank you lord god whatever we have learned this uh session lord i pray that holy spirit will continue to remind us and holy spirit you can continue to guide us lead us lord and lord as we disperse from this place i pray that the peace of god will suppress us all understanding to god our hearts our mind in christ jesus in jesus mighty name amen amen amen, amen. thank you thank you sir vitoli thank you everyone who shared and thank you everyone for joining the class as well uh yeah take care uh mostly i'll have your assignments posted out by this weekend okay so you can have a look at it uh, and also start working on them and have a blessed weekend we will meet again next week bye for now god bless you thank you boss thank you thank you bye thank you